Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback look at the BlackBerry Bold 9700. This phone was released back in 2009 and originally ran on BlackBerry OS 5.0, but has since been upgraded to 6.0. So the Bold line of Blackberries were originally for more professional and expensive devices that has a slightly better construction quality compared to the Curves, uh, which were slightly more affordable. Just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to do a quick look at the different sizes. So here's the kind of standard Black BlackBerry Curve 3G, and uh, as far as design is concerned, you can see that the 9700 here on the right has a slightly higher res display, uh, also has a slightly wider keyboard and more chrome etching that just makes it seem a bit more high-end and feels a little better put together in the hand compared to the Curve series, which is a bit more plasticky but also less expensive and has very similar specifications internally. Other devices in the BlackBerry Bold line include the 9900, so we reviewed that a few weeks back. Back and you saw that this device has a touchscreen display, but you can see quite a few similarities in terms of the design, and both of these look very sleek and modern, uh, even here in 2017. So taking a quick look at the hardware first, the 9700 still has a fairly compact 2.44 inch TFT LCD display. It also has a single core 624 megahertz processor, which is enough for BlackBerry OS, since this is a very optimized operating system uh, compared to Android, for instance. It can still browse the web, download games and apps from the BlackBerry world, and there's access to a fairly comfortable and spacious QWERTY keyboard in addition to an optical trackpad that was relatively new back in 2009 for BlackBerry users compared to the Pearl or the trackball that came before. There was an ambient light sensor but no front-facing camera, talk and end keys, and otherwise just a BlackBerry logo next to the LED status light and the earpiece. The top also hides two keys, one for locking the device to put it into standby mode and one for adjusting the volume and the ringtones for muting the device. These are pretty tactile and responsive. What I like about the 9700's design is it's tapered and kind of sharp edges. If you see here on the edge here, it looks like it tapers off from the corners. The same thing can be said about the screen. There's a slight curve that uh, adds another dimension onto the sides on both ends. It just makes it look a bit more sleek and reminds me of a more modern kind of curved displays perhaps by Samsung Galaxies. So this all definitely had a very modern look back in 2009. Otherwise, there's access to standard volume controls on the sides, which are made out of rubber, and there's also a key for launching the camera. The other side had a push-to-talk walkie-talkie key, which was tactile and responsive, and a slightly oddly placed 3.5mm headphone jack along with the micro-USB port for charging. Removing the back cover, which has a synthetic leather build, also reminiscent of some previous Samsung phones, again, there's more chrome etching with these sharp, angular, and very bold looks. There's access to a 3 megapixel camera with an LED flash, but no vanity mirror, and an interestingly angled micro, US, micro SD card slot to expand on the built-in memory. Other connectivity options were fairly standard for the time, and there was access to both Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. So as a whole, the 9700 definitely had a great hardware. It feels extremely solid, even though it's made mostly out of plastic without that much aluminum or glass, it just feels quite reassuring. Uh, the sharp looks, also reminiscent of some BlackBerry Pearls and its compact form factor, just made it quite ideal to take with you. And again, it just feels a little bit stronger in terms of its construction, the curves, uh, despite similar composite materials. Other specs were normal for a BlackBerry, inclusive of 256 megabytes of RAM. Again, super low for an Android phone, but for BlackBerry, that was enough. It also had a 1,500 milliamp hour capacity battery, and since it doesn't have a touchscreen display and has a relatively small display at that, it lasted for about three days before you needed to recharge it. Uh, so battery life was also quite good. Back then, just like today, Blackberries are mostly held by business users and corporate users that need a great QWERTY keyboard, and the 9700 did not disappoint in this regard. It's backlit, it's spacious and comfortable, the keys are well domed and tactile when you tapped on it. It made typing out longer messages and answering emails a very nice affair. 
The camera on here, despite a relatively low 3 megapixel sensor, was also quite decent. It captured sharp images and good color saturation outdoors. Uh, you can also use a digital zoom up to 3x, and you can play around with some filtering and modes. So again, this was kind of the beginning of BlackBerry incorporating more multimedia functions into their designs. Uh, whereas before, especially in their older products, it lacked a camera completely and was only meant for business with no other uses. The optical trackpad was also quite sensitive and easy to scroll around through the user interface and made the daily operation as well as uh, scrolling through lists and browsing the web a bit more comfortable. Other elements of the 9700 aren't too notable anymore here in 2017. You know, talk quality was decent, the microphone offered some passive noise isolation, so if you were talking outside, it still picked up uh, your, your voice fairly well. The speaker here was pretty loud, although for speaker phones and playing back music, you know, the, the loudspeaker is located on the back as opposed to the front, so not as ideal for blasting out your tunes or music, but it worked. Um, and of course, BlackBerry OS 5.0 and even 6.0 may seem quite dated by 2017 standards, but again, you could have access to your basic utilities, things like alarm clocks, calendars, uh, your calculator, stuff like that were all built in, and the BlackBerry World also allows you to download more games uh, on here. It doesn't have an accelerometer though, so you don't get motion gaming on board. So that's the BlackBerry Bolt 9700, a 3G enabled quad band GSM world phone, and back then, as it is today, a very stylish BlackBerry. If you're still looking for a keyboard-centric smartphone, this is you know, not a bad backup option. Uh, obviously, there are much more powerful phones on the market today, and if your main priority is downloading the latest games and apps, this will surely disappoint. But for opening up some documents like Word, PDF, Excel, PowerPoint, and also offering still pretty good security uh, compared to Android or iOS, then this is still an okay choice for product activity. Uh, makes good phone calls, the screen despite its small size is relatively sharp and has good color saturation. Really it's the styling here of the hardware that sets it apart from the numerous other Blackberries with the similar layout uh, compared to things like the Curve. Uh, I find this Blackberry Bold 9700 just to have a slightly more uh, modern look which is why I wanted to revisit it in this throwback review. So you can check out more details in our article coming out soon but this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS reviews. This was our look back at the pretty iconic looking BlackBerry Bold 9700.